When you think about it, archaeology is about taking what's old and making it new again. Archaeologists take things that were left behind hundreds or perhaps even thousands of years ago and present them to us as new pieces of information. If that's the case, recent archaeological discoveries are the newest old things of all. So, let's take a look at some of the best of them. We begin in western Turkey, where archaeologists in the city of Izmit confirmed in May 2022 the discovery of a sarcophagus with a fascinating inscription. The text etched into the surface of the sarcophagus identifies it as the casket of a protector of the divine flank. This was one of the highest officer ranks in the ancient Roman Imperial Guard and makes this just the eighth sarcophagi of someone of such rank ever to be found. It's also the first ever to be found in Turkey and the only one still in possession of grave goods and the bones of its occupant. The sarcophagus was found during an archaeological survey carried out before the construction of a new building for a local water and sewage administration. The same excavation has already turned up 51 Roman burials inside a necropolis, although none quite so grand as this one. The full inscription reads, To the spirits of the dead, I, Ciampo, protector of the divine flank, restore my monument. I originated from Daisha Minor and lived 50 years. Nobody else is permitted to be deposed here except my son, Severus, or my wife. It looks like Tianpo partially got his wish, as nobody else was buried near him at all. Sticking with the slightly grim tone of human burials, here's another discovery that was made partially by accident in May 2022. Utility works in the Italian capital city of Rome had the unintended effect of revealing the presence of a 2nd century marble funerary altar. It's a beautiful piece of marble, but reading the inscription reveals that it's dedicated to a girl who passed away at the age of just 13. The discovery happened while construction workers performed upgrades on a water network on Via Liugitozzi. The altar has evaded detection for all these years because it was more than six feet below the level of the modern road. It's made of white marble and features boss reliefs of songbirds and fruit baskets. Both the birds and fruit are known to have symbolized abundance according to Greco-Roman tradition. The inscription that accompanies the images is brief, but reads, Valeria P.F. Laita Vixit Anis, the 8th, M7. Translated, it says that Valeria Laita lived for 13 years and 7 months. The meaning of the P in PF is unknown, but the F is likely to have meant philia or daughter. We'll never know how Valeria died, but her body doesn't appear to be next to the altar. Discoveries made by construction workers are rapidly becoming a theme in this video, because this one makes it 3 out of 3. The Instituto Nacional de Antropologia has recently been modernizing an electrical substation in Mexico City, Mexico. During the course of their work, they've accidentally come across an ancient Aztec house. The professional archaeologists who were summoned to the scene in May 2022 say that it's an agricultural dwelling, dating to the late post-classic period, giving it a probable age of a little over 500 years. The location of the dwelling is likely to be significant, as it's on the border between Teocaltitlan and Yopico, which places it within the Moyotian subdivision of the great Aztec city of Tenochtitlan. The property was identified as an agricultural dwelling because of the presence of whorls, sensors, and spinning tools beneath the adobe floors of the old home. But archaeologists also found the remains of infants inside funerary vessels, the upper walls of the property are made of stones joined with mud and contained evidence of saddlery, suggesting that the lower floor may have been left as it was found, but the upper floor was reused during the colonial settlement of the 16th century. Recently, the waters of Lake Michigan in the United States of America have been unusually clear. That's down to a combination of ice melt, beach erosion, variable water levels, and winds. Thanks to the clarity of the water, it's suddenly become possible to peer into the lake and see the many shipwrecks that lay at its bottom. There are dozens, perhaps even hundreds of wrecks in the lake, 
many of which will never be identified. However, some of them are easier to spot than others. One of them is the James McBride, which went down in 1857. Another is the Rising Sun, which sank in 1917. The latter ship was owned by a religious cult called the House of David, all of whom were aboard when the ship crashed and sank in a sudden snowstorm. It's said that the unpredictable weather in the area makes Lake Michigan one of the most dangerous bodies of water in the world, but that doesn't put off the thousands of people who sail on it every year. The shipwrecks are considered public property, and as such, they're not supposed to be disturbed, but they attract divers during warm weather, and the rules don't appear to be applied. We've already seen the sarcophagus of a protector of the divine flank in Turkey. Now let's look at the final resting place of the keeper of royal secrets in Egypt. This magnificent tomb was discovered in the Saqqara necropolis in May 2022. The tomb is that of a man named Mekzetchi, who served as a royal clerk to the pharaoh Usurkare between 2333 and 2331 BCE. The pharaoh must have thought a lot of his clerk, else he wouldn't have afforded him such a lavish burial. Inscriptions within the tomb indicate that Mekchechi also served as a clerk to King Teddy, Usurkare's father. If that's the case, the secrets that he kept might have been very big ones. Modern-day historians believe that Usurkare assassinated his father in order to claim the throne. Power was often won through deceit and violence in the Egypt of the time. And so it's a wonder that a man who kept secrets lived long enough to justify a grand tomb like this one. It even has a dry moat around it as a symbolic boundary between the land of the living and the land of the dead. We're going to stay in Egypt for a moment longer because May 2022 also saw archaeologists confirm the discovery of no fewer than 85 tombs in Sohak. The impressive collection of tombs spans an era of more than 2,500 years. To the delight of the archaeologists responsible for the discovery, the tombs appear to be undisturbed. Grave goods are still present inside them, as are the remains of the deceased. The oldest of the burials are those of people who lived during the days of Egypt's Old Kingdom, some 4,500 years ago. Those older burials are almost bare, but the most recent examples include burial permits bearing the name, age, occupation, and parents' names of each person buried. Most of the burials were found concealed on the side of a mountain, and some of the more elaborate ones were connected to other burials via secret corridors. As well as the tombs, the archaeologists found the remains of what was once a sturdy mud-brick tower, which was built during the reign of King Ptolemy III about 2,300 years ago as a surveillance post. All in all, this is one of the most remarkable Egyptian discoveries to happen outside Saqqara in quite some time. The progress we're making with technology means it's increasingly possible for archaeologists to detect traces of our ancestors that can no longer be seen with the naked eye. As an example, 3D photogrammetry has recently revealed a collection of 1,000-year-old etchings on the walls of a cave in northern Alabama, USA. The etchings, most of which depict human-like figures, but one of which depicts a mysterious serpent, were created by Native Americans. Experts say that the drawings are the largest pieces of cave art ever to be found in North America. Native American petroglyphs aren't exactly rare, but most of them are carved into cliff faces or canyons. It's far rarer to find them inside caves. And up until around 40 years ago, it was thought that there was little to no ancient cave art in the southeast of the country at all. The ceiling of this particular cave is only two feet high, so archaeologists had to lay on their backs in cramped conditions to examine the artwork. There's no reason to believe that the caves were any bigger 1,000 years ago, so the act of creating art in this unlikely, claustrophobic space must have been a deliberate choice. We're back to tombs again now. In May 2022, the South China Morning Post reported that archaeologists in the northwest of the country had discovered a 3,000-year-old body missing a foot inside a tomb. The study of the remains revealed that the foot had been amputated, but experts don't think this was a case of medical aid. 
Instead, they think it's the earliest known example of a practice called yue, the amputation of limbs as a punishment. The victim of the punishment was female and lived for at least five years after enduring the amputation. Yue is one of the legendary five punishments of ancient China and was carried out for well over 1,000 years before its use came to an end roughly 2,200 years ago. The punishments were brought in by the Yellow Emperor around 3,700 years ago for unknown reasons. Later punishments included the cutting off of the nose, ears, and genitals, so perhaps on balance this woman got off lightly. The punishments were once thought to be legends, but a spate of discoveries in recent years has proven that they were very real. Why would the ancient Maya build a city in the middle of a volcano? We have no idea, but we know that they did. The proof was found in April 2022, when archaeologists found the collapsed city inside a volcano crater in Lake Atitlan, Guatemala. Experts at the scene have dated the discovery to the Mayan late pre-classic period, making it something like 2,000 years old. Evidence suggests that the city was abandoned in a hurry, shortly after which it collapsed from its bottom. On the balance of probability, the disaster was likely caused by volcanic activity. The collapse continued until the city sank into the depths of Atitlan, where it now lays almost 70 feet below the surface. Thus far, marine archaeologists have been able to identify grand columns, ceremonial stones, and the remains of buildings, although all are obviously very badly damaged from both the city's collapse and the 20 centuries they've spent underwater. The city does not yet have a name, but it's not the only Mayan city within Lake Atitlan. Tiutinamit and Samabaj are here too. Nobody knows what happened to the Maya, but perhaps their disappearance had something to do with their habit of building cities in disaster areas. We imagine that almost everybody with an interest in archaeology has heard of Angkor in Cambodia. It's the site of Angkor Archaeological Park, which in turn is home to Angkor Wat which is believed by many to be the largest religious monument in the world. Such is the international fame of the site that it would be tempting to believe that everything to be discovered there has already been discovered. But that isn't the case. In early May 2022, archaeologists found a previously undiscovered 12th century carving. The discovery was made close to the causeway of the Angkor Thom Temple's Takav Gate. It depicts an aspara, which, according to the beliefs of these ancient people, was either a dancing fairy or a spirit of the waters and clouds. The carving is remarkably well-preserved, but appears to be incomplete. Archaeologists aren't sure whether the stone has been moved or whether there was once another stone beneath it, bearing the rest of the carving. Perhaps they should have another look around the site. It seems that all of the archaeologists who visited the site in the past have somehow managed to miss a few things. For more than 25 years, a volunteer group of amateur archaeologists in Poulton La Field, England, has been on the lookout for a long-lost Cistercian Abbey they believe once existed in their area. They haven't found it yet, but they've instead just found what's been described as a time capsule of Iron Age artifacts. Their work has uncovered no fewer than 10 Iron Age roundhouses and 5,000 artifacts, evidencing the existence of a large settlement in the vicinity of Poulton La Field during the Iron Age. Most British historians believe that Northwest England was barely populated during the Iron Age, but these finds might force them to reconsider that opinion. There's even some evidence that the occupants of the Iron Age town traded with other communities up and down the nearby River Weir, so this wasn't an isolated group. The group might finally have an explanation for why the 900 skeletons they recently found at the site of a medieval chapel seemed to predate the existence of the chapel by such a large amount of time. Taken together, this is the most complete record of Iron Age life ever to be collected in the lowlands of Northwest England. Almost every prehistoric culture and civilization in the world created cave paintings, cliff paintings, and other forms of rock art. But it's rare to see any prehistoric artwork quite as intricate and detailed as that which was discovered in Colombia in November 2020. The drawings run on for almost eight miles, 
which makes it incredible that nobody has ever noticed these 12,500-year-old Iron Age works of art before. It's thought to be so significant that some historians are referring to it as the Sistine Chapel of the ancient world. The fact that the art has never been seen before and remains so well preserved is down to its location and climate. It's in a jungle-covered, hard-to-reach part of Colombia's Amazon region. It's likely that it was created by some of the very first humans to reach this part of the world. They left their handprints on the rocks, but they also created surprisingly detailed drawings of horses, mastodons, sloths, and a few creatures that are difficult to identify and might be mythical. There are even a few images that appear to depict human beings bungee jumping from wooden towers, but that's probably down to us misinterpreting them with our modern eyes. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.